Hello Internet, today we have the 30X2080 Ti that came in for a repair forward slash upgrade. Repair is because it's artifacting and I want to make sure that it is not artifacting because it has a dead core but rather a faulty memory chip and if but replacing the memory chip fixes the problem then we're gonna go with the upgrade process which I'm not really a big fan of but whatever, customers paying, that's what they want so who cares. Let's uh, boot into Linux real quick, see if we can and uh, at the very least get some sort of a test result that would point us to a faulty chip and by the way the like many 20 series cards this particular one has micron memory on it so it could be that the whole stack of memory needs to be replaced due to a manufacturing defect or it could be as simple as one single faulty memory chip and uh, that would be great so whatever the case may be first thing I want to do is to to fix the card and if it works as expected and everything checks out then we'll do an upgrade for whatever reason we're getting no errors and that's rather funny because I ran the same card yesterday and uh, it gave me an error on one of the chips so let's go and repeat the test one more time once the card is a little bit warmed up and I'm pushing on the card hopefully creating a problem with some connections so maybe maybe flexing the board a little bit will give us a problem no no problem okay who cares Let's reboot, go into Windows and see what the card is doing. And as you can see, all of a sudden this repair went south because just yesterday I ran this card for a memory test and it reported one faulty chip, but I forgot to record which one it was. But now that I'm running it and recording it, it's pretending to be okay, which complicates the diagnostic a whole lot more. Okay, here it is. The card had installed and uh, I'm not seeing any issues so far. Let's go ahead and run some tests, see if it crashes or freezes or whatever hopefully it will and hopefully running a third test would reveal a problem with whatever chip so at the very least we know it's working so far so that's already good and here goes the firm mark I don't see any signs of overheating everything looks okay no geometric distortions inside of the hairy donut that's also good so the one thing we can do is to force this thing into the overheating mode by limiting the fan speed to an absolute minimum Right there so while this thing is overheating we can probably run a different benchmark to make sure that there are no geometric distortions or any kind of glowing or sparkles or glitter type of effects inside of the uh, 3d engine that are often presented by faulty memory chips but I do not see anything right now so everything is looking clean and uh, well everything is great then <laughs> Okay, let's uh, turn this thing off and uh, reset that. Change to my custom profile and close and shut this thing down. Okay, so at the very least, we know that the core is seemingly operational, which gives me the green light to proceed with an upgrade. Also, customer mentioned some issues with the fans. So he supplied both of the two fans for me to replace. Um, I said I'm not going to replace them unless they need to be replaced. Holy cow, look at this dent. Now that's a Harvey dent. If you know what I'm talking about, please post a comment below. Yes, I like that movie. Anyway, I'm gonna remove this disaster engineering. Take it apart, see what's inside. Replace the existing memory chips with uh, two gigabyte ones. Move some straps around and uh, hopefully that's all there is. So stick around, we'll see how it ends. Alright, I think I noticed something on the back of the cord. Let's go and flip it over and uh, see the reason for a potential failure that I had been re that the software had reported earlier would be all of that shaving. So it looks like the card was a little bit hurt near this area here. And I believe this is the area where the errors were reported. I failed to note, but it was one of the chips that was kind of odd to be reported. So either way, I don't think that there's any serious damage. Just a little bit of scuffing and scraping, but the traces. I think are okay and we had a little bit of shaving of the whatever solder that was on top of here so my best guess is that it was probably reporting this chip being bad is where all that damage was um, other than that I see no reason to believe that we have a dead core or anything like that um, but the chips that are here are the chips that I've been afraid of these are early micron chips they start with the number 8 as you can see here so I'm not even 
even going to try to save these chips. Every single one of them is going to go in the trash. The thing is, if I were to replace just the faulty chip or whatever, or just reball it, eventually every single one of these chips is going to start giving us issues one after another. Or once I replace this chip or reball it, its neighbor is going to go haywire and uh, we're just going to start replacing them one by one until we replace every single one of them. And uh, that's going to be a very long time. We're not going to do that because we know better. At the very least, we pretend to know better. So we're just gonna go and replace every single one of these chips, move some straps around, and uh, hopefully that will be it. All right, we're back. Let's see if anything went wrong by measuring the resistances on memory and 1.8. Don't know where 1.8 is, we're gonna find it. That's probably PEX. Probably 1.8, that's probably 12, that's probably five here somewhere. And the memory, 16 ohms, so we're reading good on memory and 1.8. And that's all I care about. I'll wipe off the uh, fingers here. Hopefully, uh, hopefully everything works. We'll see, we're gonna power this thing on just in case to see if anything uh, is glowing unusually, unusually unusual. Who knows? Samsung chips sometimes short, but still work to a point where you can actually run a memory test and find out, find the uh, faulty chip. So far, so good. All of the memory chips are warping up more or less even. Hardly noticeable on the thermal camera, but trust me, I can see it better. Now let's boot the cord and see if it posts. Most likely it will and uh, Hopefully we get a pass and we also need to check the straps configuration using the NVMT to make sure that the straps were configured correctly. So put some paste on here, flap the cooler on, plug it in and go and do the memory test. Okay, looks like the cord is still posting, that's great. Let's go into here. Now we're gonna go into two, then we're gonna go into four. I want to see if the configuration is correct. Uh, we can actually see if there are any errors on the NVMT report. Let's scroll all the way down. Everything looked good with the exception of A0, which is not populated. That's perfectly normal. So let's close this. The straps configurations say that we should have two gigabyte Samsung chips. Let's run the maps test. Make sure that the NVMT isn't lying to us. Oh, I'm sorry, we need to go back to main you two three there we go let's see if that works looks clean so far very promising almost there bam we got a pass perfect so let's shut this thing down put the card back together run some stress tests and hopefully everything is going to be okay i don't know how close attention you were paying to the bottom chips that i had to uh scrape off the board because nvidia decided to put some underfill under the chips and that underfill is very strong to a point where it has a tendency to rip off the mask off the board not good stuff but if you've done enough of these you kind of develop sort of like a skill in the expectation uh, except this time i didn't even expect it to be there because it nothing looked on the outside nothing looked like there would be any kind of underfill a lot of times it's kind of visible uh picking out from the edges of of the memory chips but this time i completely did not see it whatsoever so who cares looks good to me we're having about 15 degrees delta and i'm hearing a little bit of noise on the left fan and that explains why the customer had shipped the fans as well as this bag of ptm whatever phase shifting thermal film whatever this is um so we're gonna be we're gonna need to put that on there i forgot should have done that but uh at the very least we'll be able to compare the results before and after so um ideally with the pace that i use i get about uh anywhere from 10 to 12 degrees delta in this case we're getting 15 for some strange to me reason so we're gonna put uh his uh, ptm whatever stuff on there see if that improves 
uh, anything by any significant margin which I highly doubt but you never know so let's do that real quick and uh, also replace the fan on the left Well, I'm guessing somebody had already tried to replace the fan, but they couldn't get to it because they stripped this screw and I can't get this screw unstripped. Great job, whoever. I give up. I can't figure out how to take this thing apart, so it's just not coming off. There's no glue, there's nothing. There. Well, there may be glue that I cannot see, obviously, um, but I can't take it apart. I got that whole... Uh, I got this screw drilled out and it still does not come out. So it seems like there's something holding it down in the middle and uh, it just doesn't want to come out. So, and uh, I went ahead and I watched probably the only video where I saw a guy attempting to replace the fan and he ended up just drilling that fan out of the board, from, uh, out of that cooler. There's no way I'm going to do that. And uh, so I'm just gonna have to leave it the way it is so that we do not damage it any more than it don't want to damage the card probably not worth it giving this the uh, fact that that fan does make noise but that noise level is so little that i would probably ignore it altogether especially given the fact that it would be sitting in the case behind the closed doors and uh, i mean i can hear a little bit of it because it's right in front of my face but under normal circumstances it's going to be inside of the case and not going to bother anybody anyway so why why bother uh, butchering the discard, replacing a fan, and uh, when it causes you little to no trouble at all. So I'm gonna put it together. We're gonna compare the temperatures with that PTM thing, and uh, that will be it. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.